Hi guys, welcome to a new episode of Unraveling Money's Work. So today we're gonna talk about one of his most famous work, called Le Déjeuner Célèbre, also means a picnic lunch on the grass. Imagine, if you will, a sprawling green meadow, gently caressed by the golden rays of the sun. In the foreground, a sumptuous picnic blanket sprouts out. Adorned with a colorful array of delicacies, artisanal cheeses, succulent fruits, and a bottle of rosé, winking mischievously in the light, it's a scene straight out of a summer daydream, inviting us to indulge in the pleasure of leisure and companionship. And yet, in this idyllic tableau, there lies a provocative twist. At the center of it all reclines our leading lady, unabashedly naked and exuding an air of confidence. That borders on defiance. Her gaze is bold, her posture relaxed, and her presence commands attention in this tranquil setting. She is the epitome of self-assurance in the face of societal norms, a beacon of empowerment in a world that often seeks to silence and shame. She's not just a passive bystander in this little tableau. With a sassy smirk and a gaze that could cut through steel, she's challenging the very foundation of the male gaze. And all this outdated nonsense. She's also directly engaging us. I like to think that her gaze at the viewer is confrontational, but somewhat amused. But is she inviting you to join in on the fun? Well, that depends on your definition of fun. Sure, she's lounging there like she's got nothing to hide. But there's an edge to her demeanor that's hard to ignore. Is she sending a coded SOS? Begging for liberation from the shackles of societal norms, it's entirely possible. But what about the other figures scattered around on the canvas? They are the unwitting participants in our little drama, a trio of men whose expressions betray a mix of curiosity, confusion, and perhaps a hint of admiration. They represent the male gaze in all its awkwardness, struggling to reconcile the audacity of a woman. Who refuses to conform to the expectations, and who can blame them? In a world where women are constantly objectified and scrutinized, our leading lady's unapologetic embrace of her own sexuality is like a bolt of lightning in the clear blue sky. Of course, there isn't really a lack of male interaction with her because she was painted by men, judged by men. And continues to be viewed by men. Critics often remark that she was not particularly attractive. Per usual, men miss the point and think that whether or not they, in particular, find a body desirable, is the deciding factor in how it should be presented publicly. Manet challenged the idea of a classical nude as a matter of routine, consistently denying the female form its apotheosis as a pure. Marble-like goddess in a world which the president claims a woman is too ugly to be groped. The idea of presenting an average female body in the place of a perfect one continues to be relevant. The fact is, women's bodies aren't here to be attractive. They aren't here to be sexually satisfying, and they aren't here for the sole purpose of bearing and raising children. And they definitely aren't here to sit around naked while some dude tells a boring story that no one is listening to. Maybe Victorine's gaze is actually telling us she wants some of that bread on the ground. As we gaze upon the scene, we're invited to ponder its myriad meanings and interpretations. Some see it as a biting critique of the bourgeois society, with the naked woman symbolizing liberation from the constraints of social norms. Others view it as a celebration of female. Autonomy and empowerment, with our leading lady boldly asserting her right to exist on her own terms. But perhaps the true beauty of Le Déjeuner Célèbre lies in its ability to provoke thoughts and spark conversations. The juxtaposition of nudity against nature, the tension between public and private spaces, and the interplay of light and shadow—all of these elements combine to create a tableau that is at once captivating. And enigmatic. Hi guys, I'm back.、Uh, I forgot to mention a little fun detail about this painting. Is that if you look closely to the left and down, you can see a frog that is hiding there. And in French, 
The word frog、Grenouille. used to be a slang for prostitute. So I think Manny was just having his fun, throwing things out there and hinting people that it is about a painting about prostitution. So I just thought it was really fun and wanna share it.